Hello everyone, in this video we'll be doing Chapter 3 of Practical Object Oriented Design in Ruby by Sandy Metz. Chapter 3 is about managing dependencies and we're going to learn all about what that is, why they're important, and why they're important to manage if you can't get rid of them completely. So what is a dependency? And it's, uh, it's a fairly intuitive concept once you see it in action. The, the idea of a dependency is that uh, an object it relies on something else if a change in that second, second thing influences the behavior of the first one. And so, for example, you can see here this uh, example on page 36, right? There's a, a gear class here, and over the course of running through the methods that are in here, they make a new instance of, of wheel. And then wheel is down here, of course. And we, we say that gear is dependent, quote unquote, on wheel because if the name of wheel were to change to something else, like ball or something, all of a sudden gear would then be broken because now wheel would be something that doesn't exist. And so that's an example of a dependency. And you know, dependencies are are an important thing to be aware of. Like you can't you can't get rid of them completely because that's just impractical, right? Like if you put all this wheel code into your gear into your gear class and if you put just all of your applications code into one class, that's just like absurd. So to to some extent you have to separate stuff out and so in turn they have to they have to call each other and they have to interact with each other. So the people who are the geniuses behind Ruby have come up with ways to to uh, to deal with this this reality and figure out ways to make your code less brittle so that you can you can make changes safely and it, have it minimize the amount of work that you have to do to keep your program functioning. So um, and by the way it's important to to manage dependencies. Um, so the the example that I gave a minute ago and that they give right here, with you know changing the name of wheel here, that means you have to change it here as well. And that's like a pretty straightforward thing to refactor, but it could be you know much worse if wheel is called in ten other places and as things get more complex, which we'll see as the chapter goes on. So I hope that that kind of makes it, uh, it gives you an idea of, of why dependencies are important and why they have to be managed. So on the next page, Sandy actually gives several examples of how the, these uh, classes are dependent on each other. And like I said, the, the first one was that gear expects the class wheel to exist, um, but but another one is that the uh, the methods are explicitly named in the other class. So for example, this method down here, this diameter method, gets called in the gear class even though it's a wheel method. And so this is like correct code and it runs and everything, but that's another thing that could go wrong if diameter got renamed or repurposed. Then all of a sudden the behavior of this would change. Either it would be broken or it would be doing something else. The, uh, the names of the params are known. This is getting a little bit more abstract, right? So you can see here when you're, when you're instantiating a gear, you have the chain ring, cog, rim, and tire. And these are all called down here, and that's fine. Um, but that is technically a dependency because you have to, you have to put in a chain ring, and then the cog, and then the rim, and then the tire. And so there's sort of a, a dependency both in the sense that those it has to be those exact four that are put in, and they have to be put in in that order. So if you passed in cog, chain ring, tire, rim, then what you get out would be meaningless because 
you're passing in the wrong numbers down here for these variables up here. And so what we would say here is that the, the wheel and the gear classes are coupled. And when you change something in one place, you have to change it in a lot of places. Remember how I was saying a minute ago about the wheel and, and the diameter. Um, and, and it gets worse, of course, as you have more and more um, more and more entanglement of your classes and of your methods. And so what is, what's the solution to this, right? And so, so, so what, what they came up with is something called dependency injection. And even though that sounds like that is just exacerbating the problem, it's, uh, it's actually the opposite. It's, it's a method of, or it's a, a thought process and, and a method of taking, of recognizing dependencies as they come up and figuring out how to, to decouple your objects as much as you can while still keeping them tied together enough that, that they perform the function that they're supposed to. And so we're going we're gonna to look at that here. So one thing that, that the author suggests to start to, to decouple these and to minimize the dependencies is to change where the dependent object gets instantiated. So you can see right here in this example, before we've done any, before we've done any changes, the, the wheel gets instantiated within the method. And you have to, you, you can ask yourself the question like, okay, and you know, we, we need the rim and the tire params to make a valid wheel to get the diameter right. But like, what if we could change that and instantiate the wheel outside of the class? And so that's actually what gets done here. Instead of passing in four params, you can pass in three params, which is the chain ring, cog, and then the wheel itself. And the wheel just gets instantiated here at runtime rather than hard coded in the code itself. And so all of a sudden, you still have your wheel, and functionally, nothing has changed. But the code is more, is, uh, is more decoupled. And really, all, all that's left is gear when it's running this gear inches method, it still expects there to be um, something that will respond to the method diameter, um, but it doesn't matter what it is. You could pass in a wheel, you could pass in a ball, or, I mean, that would be nonsensical because balls don't have gears, but anything that responds to the diameter method is now valid for it. And so that that's uh that's more decoupling for you. So I'm going to skip forward a couple a couple of pages here and talk about removing the argument order dependency. And basically what that is, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but basically when you're instantiating a class of gear, you have to pass in the chain ring cog and wheel variables in that order every time. And, and again, that's not like a huge ask, but it is technically a moving piece that like could be a problem down the road if someone isn't familiar with your code base or if it's just much more complex. And so one of the ways that, that we can sort of make it so that you don't have to worry about the order things are passed in is uh, passing in these parameters through a hash. And you actually see this uh, a lot. This is, this is a very common method. I do it all the time uh, when making Ruby on Rails applications. And maybe you do too. Um, it's, it's really nice. So you can see here the old way of doing it where it's like, here's the chain ring, here's the cog, and here's the wheel params. What they do is they basically say, okay, for the initialize method, instead of taking these three things, we're just going to take args. It could be anything. It could be pizzas. But args for arguments, right? Args. And then 
it's saying, okay, the args, the, the, uh, the key chain ring, cog, and then the key wheel. And so you have here when you're instantiating it, now this is also changed as well because instead of just saying one, two, three params, you say key value, key value, key value, right? And so instead of just passing in three individual values, you're now passing in three keys and values. And now when gear is instantiating, it knows to look for the value associated with chain ring to set that, the value associated with cog to set that, the value associated with wheel to set that. And so this is more like verbose, and so you have to type more, but it gives you the flexibility to pass in any of these in any order that you care to, or any order as it happens as you're just out building, building out your application. It's a good trade-off, like the extra typing that you have to do is, is totally worth it for that extra flexibility that it gives you. And so the last thing that I want to touch on before wrapping this up is uh, managing dependency direction. And so there's, there's this idea of like, okay, throughout this whole chapter, we've had gear depending on wheel, but it could totally be the other way around. And, and they show that, they show an alternate example here um, where wheel actually depends on gear. And functionally, it's the same. You, you know, you get the same result. It's just called differently. And it's just a stylistic difference. And so it's like, OK, which one is better? And how do you know like, if you should have gear depend on wheel or if you should have it the other way around? What, what, what she talks about in the next few pages, this is pages 53, 54, is sort of you have to take into consideration how likely something is going to or how likely it is that something will change and how um, often you think it will change how far will changes impact the rest of your application and so like if you if you take this one for example right like the method that goes between gear and wheel in these previous uh, iterations of the code is the diameter and honestly like diameter is probably not going to change that's like a pretty pretty set definition um, how, how the diameter is calculated um, but other things might change but since diameter is not likely to change I think it's safe for us to depend on that does that make sense um, and and another thing that she points out is like Ruby itself like the the internal methods like this multiply method or this divide method um, those are technically like parts of the Ruby core code that are like functions that could change, but like they probably won't. And it's like safe for you to, to depend on those. So that's sort of your like far end example of like something that could change, but probably won't. Diameter is the same way, but just to a lesser extent. It's uh, that's, that's something sort of a, a design concept to think about as you're as you're going on and uh, there's not sort of one formula for it but it's you know if you if you take those into consideration that'll sort of guide you as you're making those decisions so that's it for chapter three I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video